We're here with Thaisa Frank, the author of Heidegger's Glasses, a book that's been called A Tour de Force with Haunting Imagery by Jim Moritz of the Huffington Post. She also co-authored Finding Your Writer's Voice, which has been compared to Brenda Ulan's If You Want to Write. And her short stories have received two pen awards and her most recent collections, Sleeping in Velvet and A Brief History of Camouflage, have been on the bestseller list of the San Francisco Chronicle. Paisa, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so excited I get to talk to you. You've been able to pursue a career as a creative writer and as an academic, in addition to having a family. Um, so what advice do you have for people trying to find time for a regular writing practice? How have you kind of made this? You've yeah. been able to, how do you do it all? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, first of all, I think there are two kinds of writers sprinters and marathon runners. Mm -hmm. Marathon runners are the kinds of writers who just can get up and write 250 pages a day mm -hmm. uh, and eventually something emerges. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think those people need advice mm -hmm. because they're going to do it. They're going to get up at four in the morning before their job and write. But there are writers like me <laughs> who are sprinters where I may just not I just may feel like there's nothing I want to write. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I write around the clock. Mm -hmm. And I think that writers who are sprinters often feel very discouraged mm -hmm. by the advice, you, you have to write every day. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to write every day. If, you're, if, you're, if you feel you're not a seasoned writer, perhaps write a certain kind of writer's log every day mm -hmm. for five minutes if you have a job and kids mm -hmm. and all that. But don't sweat it, because mm -hmm. as a sprinter, your ideas will come. Mm -hmm. And then you will somehow find the time to write. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote in between meals, um, mm -hmm. in between other kinds of work, mm -hmm. because the story was driving me. Mm -hmm. So one advice I would give is understand what kind of writer you are. Mm -hmm. and it may take a while for you to learn your work habits. Sometimes you may be a marathon runner, in which case you know to write every day, and sometimes you may sprint. If you're sprinting, don't worry. Don't beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. You've taught at several universities in the Bay Area. Uh, what are one or two things that you are most hopeful that your students can learn from you? Okay, well, I, I think, first of all, what I would love my students to learn <laughs> is a sense of authority, mm -hmm. which is really trusting, not just trusting yourself, but it's something else. It's totally believing that you have something to say, which may mean discarding everything I say. Hmm. A sense of authority is kind of weird. It's, I sort of, the analogy is, uh, if you're out to sea maybe half a mile and you have a megaphone and you want to talk to people on land, you, you say, hey, hey, and no one listens. But if you turn up the volume and say, hey, everyone, and that is authority, that is trusting yourself. It's something very strange about turning up the volume. So that's the first thing I would hope they would do. And, and how do you empower that? Okay. <laughs> this happens, like, this tell happens. us the secrets, come on. Well, I, for me, what is incredibly important is finding one's voice. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that, I don't mean style, because mm -hmm. style can be imitated and voice can't be. Mm -hmm. Voice is who you are and how you express that artistically. Mm -hmm. And voice is not just the individual lines of the story, it's not just the rhythm of the prose, it's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's your own story. Voice is as unique as a thumbprint. Mm -hmm. So if you find your voice, you may start out just writing maybe something, a prose poem of two paragraphs, but it, there's a wholeness to it. And then you can extend it like a singer who can sing longer and longer notes. Mm -hmm. So trusting voice is very complicated because it isn't just letting it all hang out. Right. It isn't, I mean, many people have done that. <laughs> you know, written journals where everything hangs out and they're very disappointed after two years that they don't have a novel. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It's also how you express that artistically. It's mm -hmm. somehow finding the form. But if you find your voice, which is just how you talk naturally, and begin to channel it on the page into short forms, 
you will surprise yourself. You will surprise yourself <laughs> and write something that has a whole form. Mm -hmm. where, the, where the whole is larger than the sum of its parts and only you could have written it. Hmm. So that's what I would like them to leave with. That's awesome. Uh, just hearing that, I'm like, I can't wait to study with you. <laughs> um, your guide to creative writing fiction focuses on helping a writer find your own voice, which is something we've talked about. I feel like, can we really define what you mean by a writer's own voice? Like, what, I know you said it's not just about the, the style, so, so yeah. what exactly do you mean? Okay, well, everyone has a voice. Mm -hmm. um, everyone has had a moment at a party for example, when they're on in a certain mm -hmm. way. And suddenly you're, you have worked the room and the whole room's looking at you and you're just talking mm -hmm. and you're interesting people. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of your voice. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a different kind of person or a different kind of story. You'll have a moment with a friend where you suddenly you're saying things about a situation and adding details and the friend is captivated and you're just flowing. Mm -hmm. That is voice. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the beginning of voice. Mm -hmm. Getting voice on the page is often really hard. Mm -hmm. And although what you're doing when you're talking is voice, it isn't a story mm -hmm. because you are there as a found object. Mm -hmm. Just like Jennifer Aniston in People Magazine is there as a found object, so she's seen coming out of an L.A. store buying 15 pairs of shoes. It's exciting because mm -hmm. the character is found. So you're a found character when you talk, talking about your life. Getting it on the page is very hard. Mm -hmm. And the only thing you can do, I think, is to find the kinds of writing exercises that work for you, the kinds of things you want to write. Mm -hmm. So I have, uh, maybe I'm sort of off the subject, but I think that some writers benefit greatly from exercises that sort of lift writing out of meaning completely, mm -hmm. like writing grammatical nonsense, mm -hmm. which is not easy to do. Mm -hmm. It's nonsense, but it's grammatical. It's very beneficial for certain writers. It just plunges them into an imagination, realizing that they have one, and voice is part of it. Other writers benefit greatly from working on more sort of factual writer's blogs. Mm -hmm. But at some point, if you do that, and you don't make too, if you don't make yourself too ambitious, mm -hmm. if you keep the length short, mm -hmm. I promise you'll write something whole. And usually when a writer finds their voice, there's an element of surprise and mystery. Mm. And Robert Frost said, no surprise for the writer, no surprise for the reader. <laughs> so you kind of do these things again and again, and it kind of maybe it feels like drudgery, and then one day mm -hmm. something happens. Mm -hmm. um, your book, Finding the Writer's Voice, has a chapter called Making the Journal Dangerous. So. Yeah, of course, I want to know, how do you make a journal dangerous? Yeah. Well, I think most of us uh, write, think of a journal as writing about what we know, mm -hmm. rather than discovering what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And um, Ron Kirchie, which has a poem in the beginning of that chapter called Diary Cows, mm -hmm. where the cows are writing about that great day, you know, got up at six as usual, hooked up to the machines, out to pasture, you know, it's funny. But it's what most writers will do when they write a journal. Mm -hmm. So if, if I were to tell you about the running commentary of my day to day, uh, I could you know tell you that I got up in the morning at my publicist's house, that I came downstairs, she gave me coffee, uh, we waited for Marilyn to pick me up, and you know we kind of right. go on and on like that. But if I just sort of drift and let my mind sort of go back through the day, what I remember literally is Julia saying. Which coffee cup would you like? And looking in a cupboard at so many different kinds of coffee cups, differently shaped, different objects, some from Germany where she was born, and choosing one that said chocolat. <laughs> well, if I write that down, actually I'll, I'll begin to have a lexicon of mm -hmm. things that interested me, of things that brought me close to myself. Mm -hmm. And even though I may not, ever use those things, mm -hmm. it's, it begins to link me to things I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. 
And but you were saying that you don't write every day. So do you? How often do you journal? I wouldn't say I do. Okay. Uh, um, I do it in my head. Okay. But but I but I but I used to do it. Mm -hmm. So if that's helpful, I'll talk about that. When I sure. when I did it more, mm -hmm. uh, I would I would write down uh, just things that I would remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when I did this chapter, um, someone said, it's not very interesting because all you talked about was looking at a plate of food. <laughs> and I said, that's just the point. Right. <laughs> and, the, and actually, I mean, probably as a result, of, I, I do remember food. I mean, even the story I just told you, I remember food mm -hmm. and remember what it looked like. And as a result of that, there was much more food in some of my stories. Mm -hmm. That really wasn't the point. The point was that it grounded me to the sensate things that were part of what really interested me, not what I thought should interest me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I did that every day. That's interesting. I love that as an idea. Because I, I definitely get caught up when I sit down to journal. I'm like, well, this is boring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's a great way to think about it. Um, how would you describe your teaching style when you when you are working with students? You know, it really depends on how seasoned the writer is mm -hmm. and on what they're working on, uh, how far along it is. With a really polished story, it's really fine to do line edits mm -hmm. and you know. You know it just sounds a little awkward. Uh, I hear a voice shift here that doesn't sound like your voice. Mm -hmm. um, maybe this could be moved here. That's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. But I would say that a lot of my writing style is encouraging people to forget about what they should write mm -hmm. and just write. So uh, in addition to grammatical nonsense and uh, journal stuff. Um, I have one that I didn't really enjoy, which is having an inanimate object make a true confession, mm -hmm. like Louis the Fourteenth shoe or your mm -hmm. mom's purse. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that there is. It's very hard to say what the imagination is. No one ever really defines it. Not even people in psychology. But I, there's there is a link between voice freedom and the imagination. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to get people to leap into imagination mm -hmm. rather than staying in literality. Mm -hmm. There's a distrust of imagination. Mm -hmm. And there's partly a distrust of imagination um, because it, it really takes you out of an ordinary way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You're suddenly thinking like no one else thinks. Mm -hmm. or writing or acting like no one else writes or acts. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm excited by the imagination. Mm -hmm. It's really been a friend of me. Mm -hmm. And I think that I have various exercises to get my students excited. The very last thing I think is, and maybe this would, should have come earlier, I don't know, but um, is that there is a difference between an anecdote and a story. Mm -hmm. An anecdote would be telling you a story about my crazy family of origin. Mm -hmm. which was crazy. Okay. Um, but a story manages to find a universal element in that anecdote. Mm -hmm. So people who didn't come from a crazy family can relate. Mm -hmm. So the story sort of elevates. Mm -hmm. And again, when you find that element, it's, it's elusive. Mm -hmm. But it's perhaps one of the most important things that a writer can know. Mm -hmm. uh, because just because I feel terrible that my dog died when I was 12, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that people who don't know me will feel terrible. Mm -hmm. I have to get them to feel. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Well, I am so excited to study with you at the upcoming Writers' Retreat, and I thank you so much for taking the time for talk to talk to me today. And I just you gave me a lot to think about, so I oh. really appreciate it. Well, this was really cool because I had some ideas just as we were talking, so thanks. Yeah, thank you.